Gigantism. I love it. You love it. We love talking about giants. We love talking about titans and huge, gigantic animals and plants and trees that were ancient and huge and shot up to the sky. But today, today is going to be a little bit different. We're going to talk about gigantism, but we're going to apply it to the insect kingdom. Now, be forewarned, okay? This is going to, it's going to start off awesome as usual okay but as we go you're gonna get probably i'm gonna get more grossed out as we go i'm gonna be honest with you guys okay so the further we go the more grossed out i'm probably going to get because i'm gonna cover some nasty bug stuff okay gigantic huge real bugs nothing from stories nothing from cartoons or anything although those things are based off of real life let's start with giant ants okay check this out this first story comes to us by a man who is otherwise known as the father of history he's one of he's one of the historians that academia loves to quote quite often uh, so that they can understand things that happened in our far past However, I like to focus on those things that I call ancient oblivion, our far past that has been forgotten or withheld from us. As a part of that, a man named Herodotus spoke about giant ants, bigger than dogs, some say bigger than lambs. Check out this story. It says one of the most fantastic stories by Herodotus in his account of the gold digging ants in India, which has unexpectedly found confirmation. The gold digging ants, and this comes out of the historian's book, it says, besides these, there are Indians of another tribe who border on the city of Caspatyrus and the county of Patricia. These people dwell northward on all of the rest of the Indians and follow nearly the same mode of life as the Bactrians. It goes on to say, they are more warlike than any of the other tribes, and from them, the men are sent forth who go to get the gold. For in this part of India, that sandy desert keeps the secret. Here in the desert, there live amid the sand great ants in size, somewhat less than dogs, but bigger than foxes. The Persian king. Let me read that again. This is super interesting. Here in the desert, there live amid the great sand. I'm sorry, I can't read that. Here in the desert, there live amid the sand, in the sand, basically, great ants. In size, somewhat less than dogs, but bigger than foxes. The Persian king has a number of them, which have been caught by the hunters in the land whereof we are speaking. Those ants make their dwellings underground. And like Greek ants... Uh, which they very much resemble in shape, they throw up sand heaps as they burrow down into the sand. Now the sand, which they throw up, is full of gold. The Indians, when they go into the desert to collect this sand, they take three camels with them and they harness them together, a female in the middle and a male on either side. Now the rider sits on the female in the middle, and they are particular to choose for the purpose one that has but just dropped her young. For the female camels can run as fast as horses while they bear, uh, uh, basically just after they had children. Now, check this out. When the Indians thereof have thus equipped themselves, they set off in quest of the gold, calculating the time so that they may be engaged in seizing it during the most sultry part of the day. I'm going to translate this right now, okay? Basically, a while back, okay, in parts of India, or what was known as India, there was these deserts, and there was known to be giant ants. And these ants burrow down in the sand, and when they're burrowing down, they're kicking up all the sand from deep down under the desert uh, floor, and the people who live there, the natives and the locals, they knew that that sand contained gold dust. So, they would get a couple of, uh, they would get three camels, sit on the one in the middle, right which was the fastest one and then they would go out to try to collect and steal this gold dust from these burrowing giants uh ants all right let's continue on 
Uh, let's see. So, uh, the ants don't like the heat of the day. So during the heat of the day, the hottest part of the day, they go and they burrow down underneath the sand. Now, when the ants hide, uh, they, they escape the heat. The sun in those parts shines fiercest in the morning, not as elsewhere at noonday. The greatest heat is from the time when, uh, he has reached a certain height until the hour at which the market closes. During this space, he, uh, the heat burns much more furiously than at midday in Greece, so that the men there are said at that time to drench themselves with water. At noon, the heat is much the same in India as in other countries, after which, uh, as the day declines, the warmth is only equal to that of the morning sun. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to reword all of that for you, okay? Because, man, I can't stand how these people talk. All right, so basically, you've got these gold digging ants. They they burrow down in the ground. They kick up all this sand from way down under the desert. That sand has a whole bunch of gold dust. These people jump on their camels and they intend to go steal that gold dust, but they can only do it during the hottest part of the day when the ants are all underground, right? All right, that's all they're saying is it's super hot, right? They have to go during the hottest part of the day. Now, when the Indians reach the place where the gold is, they fill their bags with the sand and they ride away as fast as they can. The ants, however, having scented them or smelled them, uh, as the Persians say, rush forth in pursuit. Now they're being chased. All these ants, they heard the vibrations of the people or they smell their scent or whatever it is. And these giant ants as big as dogs, are chasing after these uh, riders on the camel who just stole this bag of gold dust and are running away victoriously, right? Probably scared for their lives too. Now, these animals are, they declare, so fast that there is nothing in the world like them. If it were not, therefore, that the Indians get a start while the ants are mustering, so they take off as soon as they start seeing the ants come out, right? Because the ants have to come out and figure out what's going on. So they take off as fast as they can. The ants start chasing them, right? During the chase, the male camels, which are not as fast as the female camels, they get tired and they start to drag and get left behind. First one and then the other, but the females recollect the young, which they have left behind and never give way or flag. Okay, I'm going to translate that one too. The reason they take two extra slower camels is so that when they're taken off from the ants that are gigantic and about to eat them, right? The slower camels get caught up with those ants and they the, the, the idea is to slow down that horde of ants that are chasing you, letting them eat the two slower camels while you get away on the faster female camels. Such, according to the Persians, is the manner in which the Indians get the greater part of their gold. Some is dug out of the earth, but this is the supply. Uh, but of this supply, it's more scanty. So they, at that time, they preferred this method of getting gold, stealing it from the gold digging giant ants. Boom. What do you think of that? Interesting stuff, right? All right, cool. Uh, let me just double check. I'll make sure my audio is working. It looks like it is. Good. All right, let's move on to this next story. Might as well just uh, change the picture up. Now, this is another story about giant ants. By the way, this part this part of the presentation is not even close to like the, the gross part about bugs, okay? This part is kind of cool to me, but we'll, we're getting there. All right, now check this out. There is a legend, an Irish legend, I believe, Celtic le legend, and it's called the Book of Wonder Voyages. The Voyage of the Malduin. The Malduin. Now, basically, I'm going to sum this up for you, okay? This is an ancient story about these Celts who set out onto the ocean and they went out exploring. They, It, it kind of seems like they were lost, but this, these are their accounts of all of these strange islands that they kept stopping at. Every island was peculiar and had something very odd about it. I'm going to show you like the second island that they stop at. It is the island of giant ants. I kid not. I kid you not. Now it says for three days and three nights, they tossed upon the sea, finding neither land nor ground. But on the morning of the third day, they heard a sound from the Northeast. It is the voice of a, a wave against the shore, said Malduin. When the sun rose and the day brightened, they rowed towards the noise and they put in close to shore. So they're out on the ocean, just like in the picture here, right? I actually made this. 
So, and, and they go out. Now it says that they had to cast lots to decide who among them was going to visit this strange land. But even as they were making ready to leave the boat, behold, a great swarm of ants and every ant the size of a foal. It's like a sheep or a lamb. <clears throat> They swarmed down to the beach, into the very sea, making as though they would devour alike men and boat. Then Malduin and his men were so scared that they pushed off hastily with an oar and, uh, and made sail and took off as fast as they could, nor did they cease for three days and three nights, and all this while they had no sight of land. So, this is an this is allegedly okay, um, an actual account. I mean, it sort of falls into the realm of myth and, and lore and things like that. But this is an actual account, if you take it at face value, of men who were going to stop on an island until this army of giant dog-sized ants came out. And the scary part was they expected them to stop when they got to the water, but they didn't. The first ant climbed out into the water and stopped, and then another ant climbed on his back, and then he grabbed the first ant, and they made a little ant bridge, and all the ants started stacking as they came floating on the water, making a little ant bridge out to this boat to do to do whatever it was they were going to do. So the captain of the boat was like, no, 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 we're out. Go, 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 go faster. <laughs> So that's our, that's another story that we have. Very, very interesting. So let me pull up some pictures here real quick as I speak on things. We'll get to this. All right, cool. I'm just going to put on some pictures in the background because right now I just want to address gigantism. I also want to check the chat just to make sure we're good. Oh, we are good. Hey, what's up? I see everybody in the chat. All right, good to see y'all. All right, hopefully everything's good. Now check this out, gigantism. Now, I've talked about gigantism many times here on my channel, okay? It's a part of the plasma apocalypse. It's a part of what happens whenever our world goes through a refreshing cycle, okay? Every other cycle, we have gigantism. Every other cycle after those cycles, we have dwarfism. We have tiny people. We currently live during the time of dwarfism. We currently live during the time when everything is shrinking, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I believe that the time will come when that will reverse and we'll go through another apocalyptic cycle and everything will start growing larger and larger and larger. Now, there's different reasons. There's different factors that contribute to gigantism, especially in the different... Um, different organisms like plants for example when the sky turns red or along that red spectrum color that red color actually that red light helps plants to grow much bigger than they used to so just that red light will help the plants to grow bigger right depressurization will help humans and animals and other things to grow bigger especially with uh, the increased buoyancy in our world after our atmosphere depressurizes now insects check this out you see this picture right here Matter of fact, both of the, all of these pictures that you're seeing, some of them are going to be like, you know, I mean, they're pictures of all kinds of stuff, okay? Real, not real, sculptures, paintings, AI drawings, whatever they are that, that play next to me, okay? The, the reason that they're here is not to say, look, this is an example, this, this is one, okay? They're examples so that you can have visuals to go along with what we're talking about, okay? All right, just to kind of jumpstart our imaginations. Now, insects. How do insects grow to such gigantic sizes? The exact answer, even agreed upon by mainstream society, has to do with oxygen content in our atmosphere. Now, I'm going to read this from the internet. It says, uh, I typed in, when did giant insects exist? Now, they will say readily and admit readily that yes, there were giant insects. There were huge insects millions and millions and millions of years ago, like so long ago, so far away ago. It was before the dinosaurs and it was just, you know, that's when they ruled the world. Okay. Regardless, that's a scary thing. That's a strange thing. I mean, if you were imagining yourself in that land, that would be kind of creepy, right? But the interesting thing is that academics agrees. Why do they agree? Because they have fossil evidence of these creatures. Hold on, let me make this a little faster here.
All right, boom. All right, cool. So they have fossil evidence of these creatures, which I'm going to show you a few pictures of that too. Uh, hopefully this slideshow works. I just want to make sure that it does. I'm going to set it for a faster timer. Let's just do like 15 seconds. <laughs> All right, anyways, so check this out. Academic says yes, there were giant, um, there were giant insects, right? But they lived so super long ago. Here's what it says. Insects reached their biggest sizes about 300 million years ago during the late carbon Iferous, Carboniferous, and early Permian periods. This was the reign of the predatory griffin flies, giant dragonfly like insects with wingspans up to 70 centimeters, which is about, uh, I think, like, oh, I don't know, two feet, a little over two feet, basically, right? So check this out. They admit it that there were giant, giant size. I'm not talking about big, okay? We have big insects already. I'm talking about insects bigger than us, okay? Uh, insects that have no business being that big. And when we do more research and we look into it, we have to ask what's going on. And it says here, animals such as centipedes, caterpillars, crabs, and scorpions do not use their mouths to breathe. They have many little breathing holes all over their body, which are called spiracles. The air enters the trachea through those spiracles, also helping them to be able to breathe underwater, I might add, right? So, there is a direct correlation between the amount of oxygen that is in the air being absorbed by these spiracles and uh, the sizes of these gigantic bugs, right? Now, I'm going to show you some pictures in the background here of gigantic bugs that you'll see. Keep in mind, these are our modern day largest bugs that we have. And if they can grow to, be, to get that big, imagine how large they will grow to become in the world to come, in the age to come. Now, check this out. Hold on, let me, let me, uh, I'm going to pause this little slideshow real quick. I don't want to be distracted. All right, so check this out. All of these gigantic bugs, we're shifting gears now. I hope you're ready. We're going to get into the, to the, what I think is super gross. Okay. I lost my appetite doing this next part, but check this out. So the reason that those bugs grew to be so big is because they lived during the time of magic that we talk about on my channel all of the time. That is the time of the red sky, right? That is the time whenever the, uh, those pillars, those sky pillars shoot up from within the earth and fill our world, renewing it with a fresh oxygen supply. Blue beams, ionized oxygen all over the place, right? Much of that oxygen permeating it down here into the lower levels where we start to be able to breathe it and it has a direct effect on us and everything else in our world. Now, when you take away that, that direct oxygen supply and those beams, those pillars retract every other apocalyptic cycle, then all that oxygen slowly dwindles and that oxygen content that we breathe gets lower and lower and lower right? What does that mean? That means that if there was a time in the past when insects grew to gigantic sizes, then there must be, it stands to reason that that time will return to us once again, right? Now, I want, I want you to keep this in mind because the more you know about specific types of bugs or even bugs in general, the better prepared you will be if you encounter this in your lifetime or your children and theirs, right? If you're a survivor of the apocalypse, um, you may get some healthy tips and tricks on how to beat the bugs, essentially, right? For example, going north. Going north is going to be huge if you would like to get away from all of the gigantism that's happening with the bugs. If, if living in a, in a world filled with huge, gigantic bugs does not sound like your thing and you're like, nope not doing it, like, then your only recourse is to hide your entire life because there's going to be bugs around for some time, okay? Or to go north because bugs hate the cold, most of them, 
right? They don't want to have anything to do with it. So most of the giant bugs and stuff will be found in the more tropical southern areas, right? This is why many times in the movies, especially if there's monsters and stuff, the safe place that they go to is up north. They always try to get to where it's colder or to, to go up to the northern areas or whatever. And this is what bugs do, right? All right, let me put these, the slideshow back up here. All right, cool. Now, these are some examples of gigantic bugs that we already have. Let me just back up. I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. I want to comment on some of these. All right, so going back to the beginning, this is like a giant uh, centipede type of a creature. Now, we broke down love and, ro uh, what was it? Love and monsters. Remember that? I don't feel comfortable without being able to see the chat. I don't like this. Where is my chat? There's my chat. Hold on, I got to pop this out. Like the chat lets me know if there's technical difficulties and stuff. So I like having it up there just so I could see what's going on. All right, anyways. Now, check this out. Some of these bugs, right, are named after interesting creatures that we have in our world today. For example, there is this giant scorpion, right? Huge, huge scorpions that existed. And we have the fossils. This dragonfly fossil right here is like exactly the size if you remember watching the mist those weird locust creatures uh that same exact size those demon locusts and stuff these are huge that guy looks like tim robbins <laughs> looks like a little pudgy tim robbins anyways these are huge gigantic uh creatures and they are bugs and normally you know, they might be gross and like wiggly and stuff, and but you could just step on it, honestly, right? You could just kill a, a little bug, no problem. But big bugs become a problem because a big bug could eat you and it can do much, much worse. Did you know that flies, regular house flies, that if you have an open wound or you're bleeding, they will land on your open wound and they will lay babies in your body purposefully so that they will hatch and feed off of you. And they're not the only ones, okay? So now you have to imagine in the post-apocalyptic world, you're running from weird, strange creatures, bugs, giant giant bugs, phantasoids and stuff, and some of these have the ability to lay babies in you, right? They don't even have to wait until like, you know, your, your flesh is opened up and you have a wound. They could just wound you. They could just, you know what I mean? Inject you with babies. And now you got some crazy stuff. You're like just growing inside of you and stuff. And you live in the post-apocalyptic world. It's not like you can just go into the emergency room and have them fix it up. Nah, <laughs> no, no. Right. So anyways, uh, here's one giant snails. Okay. Remember we broke down the never ending story and uh, even in love and monsters, they had giant snails. Remember the knights fighting snails, those pictures of knights that are fighting snails, medieval knights that we were taught dressed up like that and wore all of that heavy armor because they're going to go, uh, you know, do battle against some other person or whatever. No, they were fighting monsters. They were fighting giant bugs, animals, uh, creatures, humanoids, all kinds of strange otherworldly things and needed to, pr to protect themselves from electrical currents that were filling the air during a time of magic, during a time when everything grew to huge proportions, most things, many things, right? So this is where we get the mist monsters. This is where we get um, like Kong. This is from Kong Skull Island, right? Kong shows us our future. That's a prophetic movie. It's also showing you our past. Some of these things will eat you without regard, especially the, the bigger they get, the more they need to consume. Keep that in mind, right? So for example, there are gigantic worms. We've talked about the sandworms that are featured in many of our different uh, uh, movies breakdown, our truth in movies breakdowns, right? So here's some examples of that. Here is a real insect. I forgot what this one's called, but this is uh, like the one of the world's biggest, if not the biggest, flying insect. Look at its face. That's got giant pinchers on it. And this is a little version of what it could be. It has the potential to get even bigger. All you need is a, more oxygen and they'll continue to grow. This is the world's largest stick insect. I mean, imagine stick insects that grow to be almost as big as the trees that we currently have, right? 
Here is an interesting one, the giant grasshoppers, katydids, grasshoppers, locusts. We are going to do another breakdown on bugs featuring locusts and swarms of locusts, specific times in history too. Uh, that's probably going to be tomorrow or the next day, so keep an eye out for that one if you're interested in that. Oh, this guy right here. I'm going to come back to this guy. I want you to remember that, okay? Remember this one because this one's going to transition us into the world of disgusting and creepy and gross, okay? Remember this one right here. It looks like a roly-poly, if you know what a roly-poly is, okay? Now, here's a giant moth, huge gigantic moth, which means it had to be a gigantic caterpillar first. This is a huge spider. Now we're getting in more into the creepy stuff, okay? Not a fan. Me? Not a fan, okay? I could not eat when I was doing this next study part, okay? I, don't, I still don't even want to eat right now. Like, just looking at it, it's nasty. Don't like it, okay? Especially huge spiders like that. No, all right? Now, keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. Look at what these creatures look like. L remember what bugs look like, please. Please remember what they look like. Some people are like, I know what a bug looks like. No, no, many of you don't, okay? You know what some bugs look like, but other bugs you don't. This is James and the Giant Peach. Shout out to my viewers. Uh, one of my viewers actually, uh, this caught my eye that they were like, hey, that's just like James and the Giant Peach when he transitions into the world that has like these giant bugs or whatever. Yes, definitely. Especially whenever you take into consideration the, the telepathic increase, right? The increase in telepathy, just like this brain bug in, uh, in Starship Troopers, which is a true story about our world that we went through in the past and one that is on the way, okay? Uh, now, I just want to give you a little positive news. Just because the world's going to get big and all the bugs are going to grow to be big sizes and stuff does not mean you're just going to get eaten by a bug or die or the worst things are going to happen to you, okay? It is a possibility, so live your best life and be on guard and live safely, right? And cautiously and bravely. And there are ways to escape, like we talked about going to the North Pole, etc., right? So, Oftentimes, like this is Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. You see that little scorpion deal in the in the background right there? They had gigantic scorpions, okay? I've been in the Middle East and I've seen huge, black, hairy, muscular scorpions that were just like, you will get out of their way. And they're only like this big, okay? In the past, scorpions, I can't even show you. They were huge, bigger than this, okay? Gigantic ones. Now, crabs, this is interesting. You see this particular... Movie? Now, oh, the Mothman. Hold on. Let me go back to the Mothman. I don't know what this is. I think this is from Mimic, right? But it looks like a Mothman to me, right? Now, oftentimes, you have, to, you have to take into consideration these insects, many of them have the ability to change their features or to camouflage or, or, or make it look like they're a totally different creature, usually depending on their environment, right? Well, if their environment is they're as big as the people now, wouldn't it stand to reason that some giant insects would eventually form some kind of camouflage to look like they're humans, giving rise to bugs that look like they're humans? And if you add telepathy, now they can talk like they're humans and they look like they're humans, but they're actually bugs. Very interesting possibilities. Now, these crabs, giant crabs keep popping up all over the place. When I watch my movies, when I play my video games, this is Skyrim right here. Now, in Skyrim, they have mud crabs, which are pretty big anyways, right? But this one right here in particular is a giant petrified mud crab that is in the game. It's a special little location in... Uh, in the game itself, if you want, if you if you want to pause it and check it out, and you know, go find it right here, you totally can. It's got the location, but it's interesting because they have it fossilized or petrified. This giant crab that is petrified and turned into a rock, right? That's because all of these huge and gigantic things have almost nowhere to hide during the next apocalyptic cycle. One, which is way more dangerous, which is the flood. Okay, when the flood waters come down, remember our world's filling with oxygen, which the insects will enjoy. They'll get bigger, stronger, healthier. But the downfall is all that oxygen one day is going to meet with all that hydrogen that's ionized wrapped around our planet. And they'll smash into each other and wash the bugs away. All of them will get washed away. All the big giant ones. Also means that they will get petrified if they're hit by the those plasma tentacles from above, right? So gigantic crabs. Uh, what else we got? I miss anything? No. Gigantic crabs. That's where I was kind of going with this. This is from the movie Love and Robots. You see how it looks fantastic, 
right? There's this huge centipede looking thing. And you think in your head like, Ugh, that's so gross. I'm glad that's not real. That is real. This is real. I'm telling you, okay, it's my perspective. Okay. This is all my perspective, but it's very convincing to me personally that this is real, especially since we actually have fossils of gigantic centipedes or whatever they're called, whatever their technical names are, right? The giant um, snails come up time and time again. Now, I feel like Hollywood drops us clues too as to like which ones are benevolent and which ones are peaceful and which ones you should probably stay away from because they'll eat you, right? A giant snail could still kill you. And imagine this, they're all racing snails if they're giant. Like they're all going to be moving way faster than a tiny little snail way down there on the ground. Okay. They're going to be sliding around all over the place. Um, but I mean, if it one runs you over, you'll drown in snail slime. Okay. So not a good idea, right? You have to be careful. You will truly be surviving. All right. Now let's get back to these crabs. Look how big these things grow. This is a real actual crab. I think these are called coconut crabs. They are hunters. They will kill birds and they will eat birds. They'll wait in a spot and go pow, pow and they'll, they'll set up traps and stuff. Uh, look at these ones actually look like the mud crabs in Skyrim, believe it or not. They look like giant spiders to me, um, which is interesting. We're going to come to that. Okay. No, hold on. Look at these things. Look at these are crabs. Look at those. Those exist. Those are actual real ones. Okay. And those giant ants, you can imagine in your mind, they look somewhat like this too. Okay. Insects can grow and continue to grow and continue to grow as long as they have that extra oxygen. Now they say that the oxygen count was like triple in the old days. I don't know how much there actually was, but I knew, I do know, and I do agree that our world filled with oxygen suddenly out of nowhere. They can't explain why I have some pretty decent theories, I think, but not only does it help insects to grow to gigantic proportions, it also helps crabs. So hold on, let's pause on this dude. Let's pause right here. I want to talk about crabs real quick. What is a crab? What is a crab? Let me, let me type that in. A, a crab belongs to the family that is called arthropods. Arthropods. Now, what are arthropods? Let's get some examples. If I could find some examples, hold on. All right, let's see. Hold on. Let's see. Um, examples of arthropods. Boom. There we go. Now, check this out. Here are some examples of arthropods, which is what this is. This crab. This crab. I'm going to tell you exactly what all these things are, okay? It's going gonna, it's gonna to be disgusting, so hold on. Crustaceans are arthropods. Arachnids are arthropods. Insects of various types are arthropods. Scorpions are arthropods. Uh, there's other ones too. Basically, this is a bug, okay? <laughs> now, they, this one right here is actually called the spider crab. Hmm, because it looks like a spider. Now, here's the problem. Here's where some people are not going to understand the rest of this video because there's a disconnect, okay? There is a disconnect between what we're told this is and how we perceive that through our perception filters that have been influenced by our societies and our upbringings, okay? Some people will go, ha, ha, ha. Yes, it's called a spider crab because it looks like a spider, but it's not. It's just a crab. Gotcha. Okay, so let's let's talk about this, okay? These things are in the exact same family as insects, as bugs, okay? Which means they are bugs, okay? I just want to make that very clear. These are the exact same things as scorpions and cockroaches and other things like that. Which animals, this is what I was looking for, which animals are arthropods? Arachnids are arthropods. Spiders, ticks, mites, scorpions, crustaceans, which is also known as seafood. Not by me, 
but by many of you out there. Crabs are arthropods, lobsters, crayfish, which I'm going to explain in a bit, and shrimp are all bugs. They are all arthropods. Insects, beetles, butterflies, moths, and praying mantises are all arthropods. Here is an example of an arthropod. This is a very popular example. Have you guys seen this? I used to play with these when I was kids, when I was a kid. I call them roly polies. Some people call them pill bugs. Do you see how small they are? You could pick up a rock in your backyard and probably find one. They're very common. Okay. This is an arthropod. This is the same exact creature when it lives in the ocean. <laughs> this is a giant pill bug. Okay. This is a small insect. This is the giant version of that same exact insect. This is a roly poly that you go outside and you flick it and you watch it turn into a ball and you laugh. This is a giant roly poly in the ocean. However, in the modern world, people will not accept that this is an insect. Why? Because that one is eaten for dinner. People eat these. They catch them. They cook them. They prepare them. They throw butter on them and salt and stuff. And they cook them. Let me read what this says. Look, this is a bug. Okay? Don't care. I don't care if it has a tail. I don't care if it looks like a lobster. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slam on lobsters in a bit. Okay? I'm not a fan of seafood. Hold on. I mean, we'll get there. Hold on. I got to zoom in on this part. I want to read this to you. Uh, let's see. To keep the fresh and sweet taste, giant isopods, which is an insect, okay, is often cooked by steaming or grilling. Yeah, not at my house. I don't know how often that happens in the world, but pff, we don't do that at my house. The dipping sauce is made from simple mixture of salt, pepper, and lemon juice, or a special spicy seafood sauce. Let me tell you something. All of these seafood creatures, bugs, sea bugs, which is what these are, okay? I'm going to hit home on that. And this is all my perspective, blah, blah, blah. If you see it some other way, that's totally fine, okay? I'm just going to be really harsh with my own perspective for just a bit because it's disgusting to me personally. <laughs> all right? Listen, the reason why they have to slap on so much damn butter and sauces and salt and other crap is because they're bugs. <laughs> they don't, they want to drown out the bug taste. Okay. Now I'm sure people can get accustomed to whatever and be like, oh yeah, it's once you get used to it, it's, de it's delicious. This yummy rubbery, like chewing on a balloon with butter. <laughs> All right, hold on. You can try one if you have the opportunity to go to Ki Nyong. I think this is in like the Vietnam era. It's delicious. It's expensive, blah, blah, blah. That's another thing. They tell you these are delicacies. They tell you, oh gosh, this is like really expensive to go out and get and all the time and manpower and they have to put traps out there, blah, blah, blah. And so they trick you. Okay. This one right here is called a bailman bug. Australia, I'm looking at you, okay? You know why. You all know why. Australians apparently love this. It's like lobster in Australia. It's, this, is, this is basically Australian lobster. It's just a flat lobster that doesn't have the little ch -ch 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 deals on the side, okay? They call this a bug. That is the name of it. Maybe not the scientific name. I don't care. This is literally a bug, actually a bug, that they call a bug, that looks like a bug, and yet people will deny it all over the place. Nah, don't say that while I'm eating. It's not a bug, okay? It's just a flat lobster, blah, 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 blah. Okay, lobsters are bugs too. All right. They are gigantic bugs from the same millions of years ago that we were just talking about that we already acknowledged exists that adapted and hid in the sea because all of the humans were like, no way, they're trying to get rid of all those bugs. So some bugs landed in the ocean or went out to the ocean or whatever, and they adapted because some of them, like we talked about, they, don't, they, they can breathe just fine up in, the, up in the air as long as the air is wet or vaporous, you could say, 
vapor canopy conditions, right? They can breathe. It's totally fine. And if they don't like that, they can go back into the water and they will adapt and they will change a bit. But basically, they are gigantic, huge bugs that live in the ocean. And they have tricked you. They, oh my God. They have tricked you into thinking that they're rare delicacies, etc. Listen, one time, a while back in America, there were so many lobsters that were washing up on the shores all the time that they they stacked up uh something like two feet high okay there were so many lobsters um people considered them to be cockroaches of the sea that's what they were called and known as they were they were considered to be a poor person's food because they were bugs and the rich people didn't eat bugs or whatever right uh now don't get me wrong that doesn't always apply Sometimes there's aristocracies, there's monarchies and stuff that they love eating nasty stuff like that. And that's fine. It doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it healthy. That doesn't make it good for you. It just means that that's what they chose to do. Okay. Now, at some point in time, the people have been tricked into thinking that this is some rare delicacy that's just, you know, it's, it's not. This is bugs. They fed bugs to poor people. They fed bugs to prisoners. And now they're tricking people into thinking that they're eating some expensive delicacy, but they're you're eating a giant bug. That's why it's a delicacy because it is living proof of gigantism in the insect world that harkens back to the time of magic. It's the same thing if you were going to eat a tiger or a hippo or a bear or anything that's huge and also harkens back to that time when things were huge and gigantic. Uh, oh, I got the movie wrong. Well, you know, you know which one it was, you know, it's okay. <laughs> you, you understood which movie it was. That's all that matters. All right. Now this is a bug on the land on the left. This is a bug underwater on the right. Shrimps, lobsters, clams, crabs, and oysters are not food. Can you eat them? Yes. Can you eat a tub of butter? Yes. Is it good for you? No. Okay. Like, I'm so sorry for sounding patronizing, but I myself have eaten, I, I took a bite of a lobster once. Okay. It grosses. I want to throw up right now just thinking about it. Okay. I used to work at Red Lobster as a bartender a while back and, uh, and somebody basically shoved a piece of lobster into my mouth. Okay. Like I didn't know what it was and they, they kind of tricked me, which by the way, I'm not cool. I don't like those kinds of pranks where you make people eat nasty stuff and then you tell them what it was. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Okay. Don't do that. You do that to the, to the right person and they're going to make the right decision and it's not going to be good for you. Don't do that. Don't shove nasty stuff in people's mouths ever. Okay. Anyways, um, this is a bug. Okay. Now, if you never considered your seafood or your shell fish, let me tell you something. No fish has a shell ever. None of them. No fish have shells. Okay. Actual fish don't have shells. They made up that word to make it sound like you, it's something that you should be able to eat because you can eat fish. Okay. They're good. They're fine. They're not as disgusting. They're not, most of them aren't like all the nasty bottom feeders and stuff, right? Well, I mean, there's, there's some that are like catfish and stuff like that. Okay. But it's a different story. Anyway, they put the word fish on there so that you would, would forget that it's a bug. Okay. Now, if you're hearing this for the first time, you might feel a bit like, uh, Neo <laughs> when they first were like, you know, yeah, we're, we're just going to go ahead and bug you. Remember, remember he didn't want to believe it. When, when they put that bug in Neo's stomach, he didn't want to believe it. He was like, yeah, right, whatever. And the people were like, no, we think you're bugged. Seriously, like pull up your shirt. Let us look at your stomach. And then he's like, that's real. You're putting bugs in my stomach. Oh my God. And he freaks out. They, they wrapped up his mouth so he can't puke it out and get rid of it or whatever. Right. And he's got a bug. Look what this thing looks like. That looks like a shrimp which looks like a bug because it is because it's a bug. Okay. 
Derek Smith says to look up crawfish. We're getting to crawfish. We're, we're getting to crawfish. <laughs> crawfish. They're not fish either. In just a second. Check this out. Here's Gordon Ramsay right, representing humanity. Giant bugs? You want to eat some giant bugs? Oh, that's disgusting. Get out of here. I'm not eating giant cockroaches or scorpions or crickets or anything. That's nasty. How about giant bugs that live underwater? Ooh, get the butter out. Yeah. Giant, giant water bugs? You didn't say that. Yeah, they're the exact same thing. If you would like to know whether or not you're eating a bug, okay, flip it over. <laughs> Turn it upside down, okay? This is a huge, huge deal. Look at, look at it upside down. If it looks like a cockroach, like a dead spider with its legs all folded in, or it looks like this one on the left over here, it's a bug. This is from the, the Bible. It says, you shall, of these, you shall eat all that are in the waters. Whatever has fins and scales in the water, in the seas and the, in the rivers, you should eat these, okay? And all that do not have fins and scales in the sea and in the rivers and everything that moves in the water of any living thing that is in the water, it shall be an abomination to you, okay? That's how bad it was. They, the people had to be told. Throughout, across history, across time, even to this day, this is what I'm screaming, okay? Like, ultimately, you guys can eat whatever you want, okay? I'm not going to judge you. I mean, I'm going to be na I'm going to be disgusted and I'm not going to have dinner with you. I'm not going to, I can't, okay? I might sit at the table and watch while you have bugs, but I'm probably going to lose my appetite, okay? I'm not eating bugs. I'm not going to force you to not eat bugs. I'm not trying to convince you to not do it. But I am going to give you every reason why I personally choose not to ever, ever go to Red Lobster ever again. And I'm never, ever going to eat anything like that ever again. And I want to puke. I wish I could, I wish I could throw up, but I wish I could like time travel puke. I wish that my puke, I wish I could regurgitate the nasty bug stuff that I did have, like popcorn shrimp and all that nasty stuff in the past. So, yes, nasty, disgusting. When you sit down, look at what you're eating, please. Don't just take it for granted and go, ooh, it's expensive and therefore it's, I should eat it. No, they're tricking you, <laughs> okay? This is a plate full of bugs, I'm telling you. I mean, come on, you know snails are bugs, right? And I'm not going to define them. I'm not getting into all that. I'm not going to get into the semantics of, well, actually, technically, the difference between like an isopod and a uh, you know, flat lobster is, you know, or whatever. No, 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 no. These are bugs. Every single thing on this plate is a bug. It's a sea bug. Okay. I don't even like calling it a sea bug because then even then people are like, well, you know, it's an, it's an, they've evolved and blah, blah, blah. No, it's a bug period. Droopy, thank you. Super appreciate it. I'm sorry if I'm grossing you guys out, but I'm also kind of not sorry. You know what I mean? So here's what people do. They get all this dipping sauces and stuff. They pile on all these nasty bugs. They boil them to change their color so they're not all brown and slimy looking and stuff. And then they pig out on bottom feeders. Okay. This is one reason why they're so disgusting. And I will also back this up and balance it out by saying there are clean bugs. Not a lot. But we're going to talk about the clean bugs tomorrow when we talk about locusts, believe it or not. Anyways, bottom feeders. That means they eat crap. Okay? I'm going to be blunt. They eat poop. It's disgusting. That's one of the things they eat. Animals, insects, birds, I don't care what it is. If it is a bottom feeder, if it eats anything, do not eat it. That's, that's, that's my recommendation. Okay? It's not a command. You can eat whatever you like. <laughs> just remember when the plasma comes you're going to have that dna in your body and look what it did to the fly look what it did to jeff goldblum you know what i mean anyways flip these things over please flip them over and look at the bottom of it if it looks like a damn cockroach if it looks like a bug if it looks like an insect it's because it's an insect they name some of these things insects this right here is a scorpion it's just that the tail is backwards. The tail's flipped around the other way for some reason, okay? This right here, you know what this is? If I pull this up, right? I don't know, some people might be confused. Some of you might've seen this image right here and thought, oh, that's what kind of crab is that? It's a dead spider. You know what dead spiders look like? They look like crabs, <laughs> okay? 
They just, they, they, they cook them and turn them red or whatever to try to make it better. This is a dead spider also, commonly called a crab. People eat this. Look at that. That tells you you shouldn't eat it. Okay? I look at that personally. I see all those spiky things that look like they can tear me up. And my common sense is screaming, do not eat that, please. <laughs> like, do not put that near your body. That's, that, this is me talking to myself. This is all self-talk, okay? You like it? You, you're a bug eater? Do what you like, okay? I'm not going to hate you. I'm not going to be mad at you. <clears throat> but I'm telling you, there's a, there's a reason why there's such a high allergy um, count when it comes to shellfish. Shell bugs, okay? They, I, I'm not calling them shellfish anymore. They're shell bugs, okay? Because they're not fish. They're dead bugs or they're bugs they're eating bugs basically it's disgusting now even nastier is that they they put bugs in your regular food if you don't want to participate in their seafood plate they'll put regular bugs they'll just crush them up powder put them make them into powder and stuff pour pour the allowable amount into your freaking cereals and stuff god the more i research man the less i really want to eat anything in this world i swear to god like i just want some water <laughs> like that's it and i'm not even going to research water these are little nasty cockroaches okay this right here is called a lawn prawn this is a shrimp however this is a bug this is this does not live in the ocean okay if you live in australia you have probably come across these people are like what are all these things mate i don't know what these are i've never heard of them they look like shrimp we'll throw a lawn prawn on the barbie or whatever right I'm trying to joke, but it's seriously, seriously so disgusting, and I'm, I'm pissed. I'm actually pissed off that I have been tricked by this. I'm pissed off that this is not taught bluntly in our school systems to warn me. I'm pissed off that other people allowed me to eat this kind of nasty stuff. You know what I mean? Not cool. <laughs> hey, thanks for the donation in the chat, A Street. Appreciate you. Now, these are lawn prawns. This is about how big they are, okay? This is what they look like. It's called a lawn shrimp. Okay, this is just a shrimp that crawled out of the ocean and now it's a bug. That's, that's all you need in order to make your seafood a bug is to take it out of the water and just let it walk around on the land. Okay, this is what lawn shrimp look like when they come out of the ocean and people cook them. They just call them shrimp and they cut off their nasty front part and they only eat the tail because they don't want to know that they're eating bugs. Let's be honest. Okay. You don't, you don't want to eat that if it's got all the little tentacles and freaking antennas and stuff. They, you know, that's why they cut all that stuff off. Now, some people will still eat it and some people do it on purpose because they get a kick out of it. You know, seeing other people go, Ugh, right? Here's what people call crabs. Here's what people call spiders, crabs, spiders. Crabs, spiders, spiders, crabs. This is a land crab. Okay, let's just do that. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can turn some opinions if we just rename the land species instead of the ocean species. They've changed all the names of the ocean bugs so that you don't know that they're bugs. Okay, so this right here is a land crab. Okay, you might, you, we used to call these spiders. I'm going to call it land crab from now on. This is a giant caterpillar which I thought was interesting. Speaking of gigantism and giant bugs and stuff like that, this thing can grow so big. Look at it. Now, does just your common sense, does it say like, hey, you should probably eat this? Like just, just your common sense, you could do whatever you want to do. But I'm telling you right now, I have goosebumps that are like... <laughs> My whole, everything about me says, if you eat that, you'll probably die. You'll choke on that. This thing will kill you. Stay away from this. This does not want to be bothered. This does not want to be eaten. This is not a good idea. But people will eat these. This thing has a face, a clown face. Look at this. This is the front of it. Okay. Now imagine the post-apocalyptic world where these things have an, a surplus of oxygen and they grow to gigantic sizes, giving us Alice in Wonderland, right? Huge plants, huge bugs all over the place, etc. And telepathy. Now, these sometimes they will sometimes they name the bugs after fish, which I don't like, and sometimes they name the fish after bugs. So here's an example: sand fleas, right? This is an example when they actually when they accurately describe it, but the people just don't believe it. 
Okay. They're like, they're just called sand fleas because, you know, they kind of look like fleas. No, they do not. They look exactly like fleas because they're fleas. They're ocean fleas. Okay. I used to watch Mexicans down in, in uh, uh, Southern California out on the beach. Mexicans will go down to the beach. As soon as that wave goes out, you got all these little tiny bubbles that pop up in the sand and they'll go out there with buckets and they'll scoop these sand fleas up and they will eat fleas, giant fleas as a delicacy. Okay. Scottish salmon is eaten alive by parasitic sea lice in underwater factory farms. Hey, Flatter Zoomer, thank you for your donation. I appreciate you. Now check this out. You see these things? I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something. Check this out. Let's zoom in on this. You see these nasty little creatures that are attached to this poor salmon's face? These are crustaceans. These are seafood, okay? They're just tiny little versions, okay? This is lice. It's called a sea louse. Let me read to you what a sea louse is. Louse just is another word for lice. You know, like when kids go to school and they start scratching their head and they got those nasty looking bugs under their fingernails? Lice, that's exactly what this is. And it is a crustacean, which is the same as a lobster or a crab or any of that other stuff that you guys eat. Not all of you, obviously. This is the movie Starship Troopers with a giant pill bug looking creature in the background. Look at this thing's face. Well, I want you to zoom, I want you to check this face out, okay? Remember that face. Because it's the exact same face as this. Angel Lovebud, welcome. Good to see you. Wow, 15 months. Congratulations. So, this is that giant pill bug we were talking about earlier, okay? Same thing. It's a giant bug in the ocean and people will eat these things okay they will eat you if they get big enough they will eat you i promise you better be careful all right now let's talk about crawfish and crayfish first of all does it look like a fish look at it why are we calling these fish they're not fish that's not even near that's inappropriate that's not right it's it's misleading it's deceptive these are not fish these are bugs these are scorpions in the ocean, okay, for a lack of better terms. Now, why are they called crawfish or crayfish? I'm going to tell you exactly why in just a second. They're also known as mud bugs. They're called bugs, okay? People laugh at this. They're like, oh, they just call them because they look like that. That's because they, they look like it because that's what they are. They're called crawdads, crayfish, ditch bugs. Now, let's look up the word crayfish real quick. Crayfish actually comes from the old French crevice or écrevisse, écrevisse, crevice, a crack, which is where these creatures hide. They don't live out in the open. You know what I mean? They hide in cracks and dark places and crevices because they're bugs. They're bugs. They're crack dwellers. That's why they're called crayfish because it's actually a play on the word people people didn't know, know the word crevice so, so it actually turned into the word crayfish okay but it's directly related to the word crab the word crab just means grab little pincher grab it's something that hides off in the shadows and then whoosh, grabs its prey like a bug does okay they lie in wait they hide they stay in the dark places they're bottom dwellers. They eat nasty stuff usually, right? They're blood suckers. Those lice? Let me go back to those lice. Where are they? These things? These are crustaceans, just like your crabs. Just, I mean, crabs is a disease, right? It's nasty, okay? These things are literally, listen, how these crustaceans get onto the fish is they literally hook onto it like a regular lice would, and then they have a hollow out, hollowed out needle in their face, and they inject it, and they suck its blood. They're bugs, okay? Sea louse, sea lice, giant pill bugs, scorpions underwater, crevice dwellers, crack dwellers, crayfish. Crabs, graboids, okay? <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> many, excuse me. Oh man, it's grossing me out. Many varieties of shellfish, 
And crustaceans in particular are actually closely related to insects and arachnids. Crustaceans make up one of the main subphyla of the phylum Arthropoda, the arthropods. Basically, in English, this means these are cockroaches in the water. These are what they look like. Now, there's a reason why most people's bodies are allergic, many, I should say, not most, many people are allergic to shellfish. First of all, they're not fish, do not eat them. They are bugs, okay? They're giant bugs that survived in the ocean, just like many other creatures from times long ago that have adapted and grown and uh, changed over time that harken back to the time of gigantism, okay? Uh, The reason that people are allergic to these is because your body is telling you, -uh, -uh, nuh-uh, no, don't eat this, okay? Your body is telling you that. People's bodies are reacting and saying, this is bad for you. And people are like, oh man, I wonder why I have an allergic reaction to this. Because your body's telling you don't do it. Most people are like, are like this dude in um, the Emperor's New Groove, right? This dude opens up his little pill bug and just goes at it. Doesn't realize it's a bug or whatever. But the Emperor is like, mm, I don't know about that. Even the lady who's serving this up says, hot and crispy pill bug for the happy couple, Mazel Tov. She serves them giant pill bugs, which exist, which people actually eat in our world, right? This one right here is called the Balmain bug, right? Just like that other one we were talking about. Looks like a flat lobster. It's a species of slipper lobster, a name which the people who wrote, they they said that uh, this is a name that we admit we find more appetizing. So they admit this. Check this out. They rename this stuff. Sometimes. Sometimes they'll straight up call it a bug, right? But they use other words like lobster because nobody knows what the word lobster means, (laughs) right? It has lost its meaning and therefore it's lost its connection to reality, which is it's a bug, okay? The reason they call them lobsters is because they would like to not acknowledge the fact that they're eating insects, giant insects. What does lobster mean? We figured out what crayfish means. We figured out what crab means. Let's look at lobsters. Check this out. Early Middle English from lobster, lopister, from Old English, lopestre, lobster, also locust. A corruption of the Latin locusta, locusta, a marine shellfish lobster, also a locust or a grasshopper. So you can change the name if you'd like to. Lobster still means bug, okay? Comes from the word that means locust. It's a water locust. What? What? Hey, are we good? Hold on. Let me just check the chat. I just, I got to make sure we're good. Okay. We're still good. All right. I don't know. I saw some crazy comments. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. I got to pull up this chat. God, how do I get out of the chat so much? I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't want to tell you that your food's nasty. I'm sorry, but it's nasty. I'm so sorry. Like, uh, like if my family was about to eat a giant bug, I would definitely let like let them know. You know what I mean? I definitely. I mean, it's not always polite to let people know while they're actually eating how nasty the thing that they're currently eating is. So you know, if you're going to talk about it, I recommend doing it at a time where they're not eating those things, so that you're not just ruining their meal or whatever, right? Um, unless you know, <laughs> unless you want to, that's your prerogative. But this is this is all I'm saying. All right. They are gigantic bugs. Gigantic bugs get much bigger than just lobsters and crabs and stuff like that. Those things are huge because they're buoyant, okay? They're not out here on the surface and everything's, all this pressure is crushing down on them and weighing down on them. They're, they're, they float in the water. Now, granted, there is water pressure and stuff, but they, they're down there in the water floating around and they grow to huge sizes, right? And I would guess that way deep down at the at the bottom of the ocean, maybe there's more oxygen in the water. I'm not sure. I, don't, I have no idea. But what I do know is that the more water, I mean, the more oxygen you have, the bigger the bugs will grow to be, right? People will hunt these bugs down. 
They will develop specific fighting classes of people who are specially trained to fight giant bugs. And when they go out there into battle, dressed up in armor that can only be described as something that is useful against monsters and not humans, okay? They go out there and they start slicing off bug body parts and stuff. And when they're victorious, they will pick up those horns. They will pick up those, uh, those bug body parts and legs and exoskeletons and stuff. And they will put them on their own armor as a form of victory. Chuck and Chambers, good to see you, right? These men were called samurai. That's why samurai armor looks like they're giant bugs. Because they were. They would take the armor off of the giant bug that they had killed and they would decorate themselves or use it as a part of their own armor. Also, some people would eat them. Okay? I mean, pfft. when people are starving, they'll eat all kinds of things. But people would eat these gigantic bugs, fantasoids, all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay? So that's really what I wanted to talk to you guys about was gigantic bugs. I want to leave you with this. I'm not trying to gross you out. All right. It is, it is gross to me. It's disgusting to me personally. It's nasty to me. If you like it, fine. Totally fine. I'm not saying you're a bad person or anything like that. Okay. I'm not saying you're gross. I'm just saying I am personally grossed out. I'm not a bug eater. Okay. I think the Bible was pretty good when it started talking about like, Hey, don't eat that stuff. That is an abomination. Those things eat excrement and all kinds of nasty stuff. Don't eat that stuff. I am a fan of that. I like that. Right talks about how you should eat, like you could eat cows, which have four stomachs, which purify things four different times or whatever. Anyways, that's a whole different story. My point is not to gross you out about the food that you're currently eating, but to prepare you for what is to come. If there was a time where giant bugs existed because of an increase in oxygen, it stands to reason that the time will come once more where oxygen is once again increased in our world and bugs grow to gigantic sizes. Until next time, I'm Jay Dreamers, saying good vibes and goodbye.
Mm-hmm.